Knowing how to pack for cold weather can fundamentally improve how you travel and pack. Furthermore, failing to pack correctly for the right cold environment can be detrimental to your experience and even dangerous. In this video, I'll go over how we've learned to categorize our clothing and prepare for cold weather hiking and how that helps us prepare properly for colder and mild environments. But first, let me introduce myself. I'm Don, and if you love travel and adventure, you've come to the right channel where I share tips and experiences to make sure that your next trip is a wonder to behold. Let's get into it and talk about everything you need to know about preparing for colder weather elements and everything you need to know about layering. All these tips and clothing will also be highly reusable for other non-hiking activities in general travel because of the high durability and packability of all these clothes. Of course, it comes at a cost, being that the lighter and more durable you go, the more costly it's going to be. Layering. In general, you want to consider three layers when packing, and these will cover your top and bottom. The bottoms can be optional, but I often consider the tops necessary. Being that I usually pack the tops, but sometimes I leave the bottoms. The bottoms are more situational. The three layers we'll review together is the base, thermal, and hard shell layers. Base layers. The base layer goes above your underwear or next to your skin and its primary purpose is to keep your skin dry. Right now, I'm wearing a base layer. This is a base layer top. It must be quick dry, non-cotton material that optimizes wicking moisture away from your skin. In cold environments, moisture will make you uncomfortably cold fast. And when you're working hard hiking, moisture from sweat is inevitable. The base layer should not be too loose as being skin next to your skin will help it wick, but it doesn't need to be skin tight either. It can also be long or short sleeve based on your preference. There are thicker base layers that help with warmth in colder environments, but generally a thin lightweight material will take you far. The base layer's primary purpose is not for providing warmth, and so you should optimize comfort and thinness and packability any day. Also note that a lot of quick dry material can often become very smelly after being exposed to moisture and sweat over time, and so you'll want to wash them by hand in a river or as you go any way you can and then hang them outside your backpack since they're quick dry material they will dry fairly quickly. The thermal layer. This is a combination of several different materials and clothing that you can wear and layer and mix and match for providing warmth. There are many different types of materials you can use for thermal layers but in general there's two categories. The material used and the general thickness of the material that will help you provide warmth. There are many different types of materials you can use for thermal layers, but there is a handful of categories and thickness for you to consider, and they're all for providing you warmth. You wear this layer on top of your base layer, and it does not need to be a tight fit. It works by slowing the release of air and keeping the air closer to your body warm and slowing that release of warm wear to the elements. In general, you want puff. The more puff, the more warmth, but it also takes longer to heat. So there's a balance, and that's why you need light thermal, like this is, this is a light thermal, and you can see that there's not too much puff, but a heavy puff will make you very warm. It's important to keep from sweating as much as possible, as it'll wear your hydration levels down, tire you out, and when you stop moving, that sweat will cool you off really rapidly. That's why it's so important to really nail the right thickness of thermal to wear. You want to slow the heat loss and still be able to move. That's why it's so important to nail the right thickness of insulation to wear at any given time so you don't cause yourself to sweat. In general, you will wear light or medium thickness like this light one while you're moving to since you're generating so much heat from the movement, you want that heat loss while still trying not to cause yourself to overheat. Just the right amount of heat that you need. And when you're at rest, or if this light isn't enough, you might put on a medium at the same time. Either put on the medium and take the light off, or you can wear both of them. And as soon as you stop, you might put on this heavy one. 
as you're taking a meal break, taking a water break, and to keep your heat that way. And you can see this one is quite a bit thicker, and but they're still very packable. You will want to own light, medium, and heavy insulations so that depending on the conditions and the environment you're going to, you can bring all of them or mix and match as needed. And also, if they're in your backpack, you can wear and take, you can take off some, you can put them all on, depending on how you're feeling. You can consider a few different types of insulation. Down, wool, fleece, and synthetic. There's more, and synthetic's a big category. But let's just generalize here. Down insulation is your go-to insulation for warmth. It is quite packable and it's the material, the outside material is highly packable. It has incredibly good puff and it comes in all different sizes, medium, heavy, and light. And the downside of down is it cannot get wet. If it's raining or you're sweating too much, you will ruin the ability for it to keep you warm. Down cannot get wet, so you have that situation to deal with and uh, you have to be careful with moisture management when it comes to down. It works great for high mountains, but maybe in lowland where it can still rain, they can be a little troublesome. Wool and fleece are generally cheaper, but a little bit heavier. What I'm wearing right now, smart wool option that is close to my skin, obviously not much puff. It's a very light layer, but the nice thing about wool is it can get wet. So when it's this close to the skin, it can also be slightly moisture wicking, but I generally don't advise that you mix the layers. But it is okay because wool does really well in still providing heat when it is wet. And so that is one property that uh, that is good. One thing to be aware of is cheaper wool options. There's a whole bunch of different types of wool because it comes from animals and and some cheaper options might be a little itchy when next to your skin. So generally you'll want a long sleeve base layer underneath this so it doesn't cause itching or merino wool. It's a little bit more expensive but it is probably the softest and it feels okay on the skin. So you'll have to try different wools. Some people can't stand wool, uh, but there are some good options like smart wool that do really well. Lastly, are your synthetic options. Synthetic layers have many different types of blends and often look very similar to down jackets. They are a little bit heavier and can be quite different material. And, but they are just as warm and they generally do well when wet. So these are nice alternatives. They can be similar price to down, but usually are a little bit cheaper. And there's a whole bunch of competitive blends. I'm not going to get into the science of all the different competing blends. And there's like, there's a whole bunch of them. Different companies have their own blends and such. So, but I'm just categorizing them all as synthetic. So between your synthetic, your downs, and your wools, and I don't have representative here, but the fleece as well. They, there is no best. There is no best, and they all have different properties. So you end up being like me and just having them all. And you'll adapt to where you're going and the situations you're gonna be in. You can pack accordingly. And uh, what's nice is if you pack a whole bunch of them, like these, most of the down was amazing is they pack into a tiny little ball and the synthetic does a pretty decent packing, but it's, it's usually not as packable. It's a little bit bigger. And then your, your like small little white layers like this, usually super easy to pack. I just end up bringing them all, a lot of them on a lot of trips to cold weather environments. Uh, and they are great to mix and match. And lastly, you have the hard shell layer. This hard shell goes on top of all of your layer, other layers and protects you from rain and wind. That rain and wind, if you don't have these, it will destroy you. A good hard shell blocks wind and rain from getting on you. It's important to note that they're usually very thick material. They can't really puncture easy, they're durable, and they protect you from in high winds. They should also be water resistant, but to get that water resistance, they have a special chemical that when you buy them, it'll have this already on there, but that chemical will wear out after a year or two. So you will usually have to wash it with this thing called Tech Wash or some other blends that will reapply that coating to it. And you can see how well it is protecting it from rain because the water should bead into little dots on it if it's doing its job. If it's 
If it's old and the chemical is not really working, you'll find that even the best of hard shells will just stop being water resistant. Of course, a hard shell should be very durable and lightweight. It should be very loose fitting so that you can have a decent puff on it. You will generally only put your hard shell on as needed. However, because it's so durable and it's super packable, I bring this thing on almost every single trip I go on. It is very rare that I go anywhere where I'm not at least concerned about some wind or some rain. And so this thing just goes a long ways. Uh, and so yeah, I bring it everywhere. The thing maybe I don't bring is the hard shell pants. This is more situational. Of course, you'll want these for if it's raining, it's, it's, uh, it's, or it's very windy. You'll want the, keep the heat from escaping your legs as well. And the hard shell pants uh, goes a long way. One thing I will recommend is if you do buy hard shell pants, you can consider these zippers along the side. You can kind of see how this thing has the zippers that go up and down. And one nice thing is that these are just very easy to put on. So you don't want to like be taking your shoes off while you're hiking and putting them back on. These, because of the zippers, allow you to unzip it, allow you to put your shoe on almost without touching it. And so it's just super useful to, for putting it on on the go. And I don't think anyone wants to sit around while you're like taking your shoes off and putting this thing on normally. And so it's just something that you'll probably want. It's a nice feature for a hard shell pants. One thing to consider when you're purchasing a hard shell is breathability. There is a whole bunch of different blends, Gore-Tex and uh, Avent, and uh, I'm not gonna get into the different sciences of them, but they all say some are more breathable and there are some that are definitely more breathable than others but they're all not super breathable and so some nice features are that you might look for are some zippers either along here or around the armpit that you can kind of open and close because if it is windy uh, you will you, you don't want that wind to just tear the heat out of you or if it's rainy you will find that you start sweating a lot when wearing this. And so those zippers, especially in warmer environments, but you want to have your hard gel on, will take you a long way. So those features are quite nice when you're buying these. And of course, I usually try and buy the more breathable one, but again, they're, it's never gonna be super breathable. It's not like, you know, wearing a t-shirt. Just a real quick mention of pants. So here we have some of my hiking clothes that um, I have a whole bunch on different types of pants, but it really, the pants are not super important. So the most important thing is to optimize on comfort and that you can wear for a long period of time. Generally stay away from anything cotton. Uh, it, when cotton gets wet, it gets heavy and it doesn't, it will uh, not feel well, great against your skin. It's also very slow to dry. So, non-cotton clothing and I prefer pockets. What I know woman clothing generally does really terrible at having pockets, but uh, even for uh, my wife will prefer ones with pockets as well. And yeah, you have your long pants. Uh, generally for long pants, if I am wearing long pants, I have some concerns. There's different levels of thickness, but you want it to be a decently thick thing because you'll be walking through some brush and there might be sticker bushes and such. And, Kind of thick pants, not super thick, but decent thickness will help that from tearing your skin. So it just prevents getting a whole bunch of cuts here and there, and also mosquitoes from biting sometimes. So that was some quick concerns about pants. Like I said, you generally don't need to worry about pants too much. Something that's comfortable. All right, let's talk underwear and socks. On travel and hiking, we use lightweight underwear which is generally non-cotton and is quick dry. So we have two different options here. There's the disposable one, which can be great because sometimes you can buy these and on the as you're going through your trip, you can wash them several times and by the end of it, you can throw them away. These are necessary if you're going into jungle environments or off the grid for many days. And these are quite handy for those purposes. But uh, if you're not planning that, my second option, which is the more comfortable option, is these quick drying lightweight material. You usually can bring just two of these things and alternate one after the other while wash one in your shower when you shower for the night. If you can shower, wash it 
and it can dry the next day and be ready to go to alternate on the next day. Socks provide the important function of keeping your feet dry, protected in your shoe from rubbing against the hard friction surface, and also warm. Wet feet will make your skin soft and easy to blister and tear. Further, hiking boots and especially mountaineering boots will rub those feet raw until you have a new hole in them. Similar to layering, we generally bring two heavier and more thermal socks, especially for cold weather, and then several, and mainly the bulk of the rest of the socks are these smaller, either short or long skinny socks that just are there for comfort and, and general, uh, you'll change these every day. While your thermal sock, you can just alternate between the two and you generally will keep these fairly clean by changing these every day and you can just use two the entire trip. Athletic socks will absorb sweat on your feet and they are easier to wash so you keep their thermals more clean as they don't dry as fast. I generally do not recommend anyone go buying parkas and soft shells have a very limited function. Soft shells generally are great for ski. This is a ski soft shell right here. You will see and if you, I wish I could tell you how heavy this thing is, it's quite heavy. It's uh, not very packable. It's very warm and it does a great job for skiing. But it's not really good for general travel and it's not really good for hiking. I would never pack this thing or bring it on a hike. So limited function and parkas are kind of like this, but they will generally go down past your waist and down to your knees. And so they're like a really big soft shell and uh, they're really puffy. You really don't need them except for the most extreme environments. And I'm talking about like Antarctica and Everest. And honestly, you probably don't need to buy it for those situations. I would just rent it. Uh, so I, I don't own a parka and, and soft shells for skiing. Soft shells are just not very good for layering. They try to combine the hard shell and the insulation into one to varying degrees because you can't really you can't really mix and match as easily because they're all kind of just instead of layering they are the anti-layer they are literally trying to throw everything into one layer to make for convenience and it worked for skiing but not so much other things i didn't cover other hiking accessories such as hats gloves buffs and boots in this video and once those are done I'll make sure I link them on the screen somewhere off to my side, whichever direction it is. And until then, make sure you stay tuned, it's coming. Make sure you smash that like button. And if you have any follow-up questions, thoughts, concerns, please let me know in the comments below. Until next time.